Real quick, remember to check out my movie channel. The link is in the description below. You can see, you know, I have videos on Saltburn, Priscilla, David Fincher's The Killer, Killers of the Flower Moon, uh, the Barbenheimer stuff, Bo is Afraid, a lot of good stuff. Check that out. Again, link is in the description. But anyway, back to your regularly scheduled programming. All right, let's talk about Desmond Ritter and the Atlanta Falcons. Hey, a win is a win, right? You found a way to win the game. You're still in first in the NFC South and have a game over the other two contenders uh, and you know play Tampa Bay next week. That's a big game. I want to talk about Desmond Ritter, though. I want to talk about how he played in this one. I actually thought he played okay in this, despite the not impressive box score stats and not impressive you know overall final score. I thought he did all right. It, it, it was a tough situation for him. It was. This play, though, it's going to be a you know good example. It's zone coverage, and it's that over-the-middle route. Going to Kyle Pitts, that's where you're going to want to hit the ball. It's you know uh, third down and 14 here. Okay, well, let's see how Ritter plays this Ritter is going to take the snap he looks over you know it's, it's it tries to you know wait until the gap in coverage is at its biggest and then makes the throw and you see right here there is a window it's not a wide open window but there is an opportunity here for him to try and hit you know make this play work and I would say he puts it perfectly on the money uh it's dropped by Kyle Pitts so it ends up being incomplete but really good stuff there by Ritter and these are the kind of things I feel like we're seeing from Ritter Really, I feel like these are the kind of things we see all year from Ritter is the kind of consistently putting the ball in the right place. Uh, he, you know, the mistakes have been the issue with Ritter, but I feel like in this game, we saw him consistently put the ball in the right place. Like this one's going to be one where it's a, a man coverage play and you're going to look towards Kyle Pitts. So that's the situation. A man coverage, cover one blitz. You see Kyle Pitts running around, to, you know, it's going to go towards the sideline. Okay, well, let's see how this works. Ritter takes the snap, he runs a play action, you know, there's pressure in his face, and you see Kyle Pitts is about to get open down the field, but this is a hard throw to make. I mean, this is a, you know, real high degree of difficulty type play. However, Ritter off balance puts this one perfectly on the money, and they're able to get a completion there. So, you know, it's good stuff. Again, I'm not saying these are the you know, biggest highlight real level plays you'll ever see or anything like that, but he doesn't need to do that. They don't need Patrick Mahomes to make the playoffs right here, right? And I don't know. Uh, you still want to make the playoffs, right? It's still fun if you're a fan of the team. I get the whole draft pick argument, but, you know, at the end of the day, uh, the difference between picking 20th and picking 10th, sure, that matters. But as a fan, you're probably going to have more fun with your team getting to the playoffs than you are, you know, on draft night with that extra 10 spots. Uh, at least that's how I view it. But anyway, uh, going over here, this play was a key play in this football game because, again, it's currently 2 to nothing because, of course, it is. That was the perfect way for this game to start, I think, with a 2 nothing score. You want to be able to score touchdowns. You know, drives are going to be hard to come by. Long drives are going to be hard to come by. Finding ways to get the ball into the end zone is huge, and a lot of times it comes with a quarterback making a big play. And so that's what they're going to hope to see have happen here. It's man coverage. You get some one-on-one -on -one matchups, and it's not exactly an elite number one receiver who has has this one-on-one -on -one matchup right here. This is uh, Michael Pruitt, the uh, tight end on this play. He's the guy who's going to be with the one-on-one -on -one matchup because, you know, when you have Drake London, when you have Kyle Pitts, who cares about them? Michael Pruitt, he's the guy you need to be putting the ball uh, towards. Well, okay, let's see how it works out. As you see, Ritter runs the play action, and because of maybe getting players a little bit out of position and expecting there to be a potential run, now this over-the-top shot is open and this is this is how the Arthur Smith scheme is supposed to work right I get a lot of people are criticizing the Arthur Smith scheme I would say like there are times when it works I don't love that philosophy I've never loved that kind of coaching philosophy but like there are definitive times when it you know there is a benefit to it right I just don't think the you know the downside is worth the benefit in my opinion but this is the benefit you get an opportunity to get Pruitt open as you see Ritter's throw is I would say a touch too far but Pruitt was able to still find a way to make the grab makes a tough catch there so still a good play by Ritter finding the open guy and throwing a catchable ball and then Pruitt I thought made that play and you do have to give a little credit to Arthur Smith here uh he's the one who dialed up that play and was able to make it work so good stuff there but of course, going over here, you might be saying, Jackson, okay, fine. Yeah, he made some good plays. I, you know, whatever you want to say, box score is still the box score. The, the total score is still the total score. 13 points in this game, only three points in the second half. Ritter, you know, uh, 121 yards in 27 attempts. That's under five yards per attempt. It's not great. And while I don't disagree, 
those things are team stats, right? They're not just player stats. And I think that I'd like to see more uh, guys get open in this one more consistently. Like this play, third down and 10, I was kind of joking about like, you know, oh, why throw it to Kyle Pitts when you have Michael Pruitt? Well, they're going to try and throw it to Kyle Pitts here. It's a one-on-one matchup on the outside. Ritter is going to take the snap. He's going to, you know, go with his talented tight end. There's a little bit of separation, so you can understand why you want to make this you know, play. It's just going to come, just going to go down to can Pitts win? Can Pitts find a way to make this work against DJ Reed, who's a good corner for the Jets? And this is just as much about the Jets' defense as it is the Falcons' offense. As you see, Reed is able to come in and knock that ball away. Really good play by DJ Reed, I thought, but uh, at the same time. This is why they weren't able to get, get things going. This is why they weren't able to do a lot was because they weren't able to consistently win in these scenarios. And, you know, again, there's so much built on the running game. But when the Jets were able to take that away, Bijan under three yards per uh, carry in this one, which isn't ideal. And, of course, I'm not blaming him. I'm, I'm crediting the, uh, you know, the Falcons or excuse me, I'm crediting the Jets defense more than anything. But when you're able to shut that down, you need guys who can win on the outside. And in theory, they do just in this game, they weren't winning on the outside because again, how much do you want to say that's bad uh, Falcons? How much do you want to say that's just good Jets? But also going over here, I mean, it's the other guy, right? It, there's not just Kyle Pitts, it's Drake London. And again, people are clamoring for them to throw the football to those two guys more. And I'm one of those people, right? I'm with you. But in this specific game, third down and five, okay, let's throw the ball up to Drake London. That's his route he's running. As you see, right when this play begins, you know, right off the bat, London's wide open. So this feels like this should be a easy, you know, big completion. However, London's route kind of takes him more backs to where a defensive back is able to actually get back into the play. So by the time the ball is actually thrown and in the air, the separation has completely gone away. And as you see, the defender is able to, you know, reach up and make the play. So Drake London not able to get uh get the victory, get the, the W on that one. Uh, and that would have been a big play. Getting the first down here, trying to, you know, extend the lead as he had that five point lead for seemingly the entire game here. Give credit to Michael Carter, the defensive back for the Jets, for being able to make the play. At the same time, though, like Drake London versus Michael Carter, that's one that you, you hope you're winning if you're uh, Atlanta and they weren't winning in this game, which is why the offense wasn't great. But the one thing that you have to look at with this Falcons offense, and the reason that I think that you feel a lot more comfortable potentially going into Tampa Bay next week is no turnovers. And that's so huge for Atlanta is to not put the ball in harm's way consistently. Obviously, that first time that they played the Buccaneers, the only reason that was a game and was really a game came down to the final play uh, was because of the fumbles by Desmond Ritter. And if you can cut down on those on the penalties, you are 100% a playoff team like they are. And Ritter is a fine quarterback. Like Without his penalties, he's just like, he's an okay player. Like the offense has been ran pretty well with him out there. He just keeps keeps turning the ball over. So you can get those out of there, get the mistakes out of there. You feel a lot better about where you're at if you're the Falcons. At the same time though, uh, you know, it's just one game. Where is that actually what he's done? Has he gotten rid of the, the turnovers or did he just not throw any interceptions today? Did he just not fumble today? Well, I don't know. But those are my thoughts. What are yours? Let me know in the comments below. Always love hearing from y'all. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.